again talking books. The book I'm going to talk about today is by Marla Nunn, a fabulous Australian author who's written a book called Silent Valley. This is actually the third book in this series. It started off with A Beautiful Place to Die, which I read and loved. This I like too. I didn't like the second one so much, but this is really what I think is back to form. It's set in Africa. It's about this Zulu girl who gets murdered and Detective Emmanuel, who's actually working with a Zulu detective to solve the crime. I'm really in this book when I read it. I love yeah. it. I think she just captures it. She really does. I think it's an interesting procedural. Um, I really like the setting. Um, it's I unusual. don't like the word procedural, but anyway. Well, <laughs> well, 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 look, I actually think it's sort of a halfway house between a procedural and something more like a sort of a, a closed community sort of Agatha Christie. You know, it sort of, yeah, it sort yeah. of sits somewhere in, okay. the, in, in the middle there. Crime novels set in 1950s South Africa um, uh, not a diamond dozen. No, they're not. Um, no. It's, no. It's a really unusual setting and the dynamic between Emmanuel Cooper and his sidekick Shabalala. Shabalala, yes. Is, uh, yeah. is a really interesting uh, And you know, she yeah. really gets dynamic. it because she is South African herself yes. and she mm. grew up there. There's nothing not real about this book no. in terms of sense of place. Yeah. and. Yeah, and what's really interesting is that there are some, because it's set in the 1950s apartheid, South Africa, what you would normally expect if it was set in a, a society like ours or England doesn't work because yeah. there are certain people that yeah. only... Shambalala. Shambalala. Can only talk to Shambalala. Yeah, yeah, and the only ones that sort of the detective can talk to and it's that whole moray of the sort of, you know, of how that society works and how to negotiate that society. There's a murder to be solved and it's dealing with different different types mm. of people to solve that. And the likeness to reading, you know, a crime fiction set in LA is mm. kind of almost there as well. Yes, she's yes. she's yes. good. She's a good writer and I think she's somebody to look out for. Absolutely. That's Marlon Anna. Do we have consensus on this? We is do. this almost yeah. a miracle? <laughs> <laughs> we, we do. <laughs> it's crime fiction within the genre. Absolutely. A very, very fine example. I reread books that I've loved from when I was a kid, the Narnia Chronicles, and I reread Black Beauty. I do reread books to have the enjoyment all over again. I've seen Clockwork Orange ten times, and I've read my favourite books ten times. So, um, Jeffrey Eugenides is one of, I think, one of the top tier of, of, of American novelists writing today. He's in town for the Sydney Writers' Festival, and um, this is something that had been on my list for a while. I'm really glad to have the opportunity to read it. It's his third novel. Um, his, his debut was, of course, The Virgin Suicides, which is an amazing film. He won the Pulitzer Prize uh, a few years later for Middlesex, which mm. was an incredible um, novel. Um, and this is, um, this is his third one. It's called The Marriage Plot, and it's set on a uh, United States college campus in the 1980s. You've got three students, um, Madeline, who's an English major and who's been studying The Marriage Plot, which is the archetypal romance slash marriage story in, in, in authors like George Eliot and, and, and Jane Austen. Um, and then two fellow students, um, Mitchell, who's a kind of spiritual seeker, reading Christi Christian mystics and, and, and people like that, and Leonard, who's, uh, who's a science major but also very into philosophy. Um, what I love about this is not the plot so much as the characterization. From the first paragraph, when you've got Madeline, whose her, her personality is completely described by the Hangover. list of books on her. <laughs> no, no, by the list of books on her shelf. Yes, that's and, true. And I'm, I'm the kind of person who, you know, you, 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 you sort of gain a sort of sense of identity when you look at the books on your shelf, and, you, yeah. and, and those are the books that, 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 you know, appeal to me and represent, you know, the kind of person that I would like to be, perhaps. This is a it's a it's a love triangle between the three of them, um, and you follow them in the sort of six months or so following their graduation day. It's hard to go into the plot in any more detail than because that because there's it's really... not much plot. That's well, no, why but it's, it's a bit about hard but it's go. about the characters and yeah. it's about the ideas. And I, I think he's such a fine writer yeah. that it, it, it's the kind of book that that makes you want to go and read all these books as well? I mean, uh, for me, there was the, the, the love triangle and that was yep. sort of one part of it and then there was all the literary theory w uh, part of it yep. and then the sort of the, then the sort of the academic investigation. Yeah, which is, and, and, that, and, and literary theory and, and but it sounds a lot drier than it is. It's actually really... Yeah, I look, I admire, I appreciate it. Yeah. It didn't get me here. Yeah. I think it was more about characters than plot and that's Very kind of where so. it lost me. It just didn't capture my imagination really. It's a coming really. of age. Yeah. It's a coming yeah. of age US college campus. really told mm. in a very highfalutin long way I thought. Mm. You know, it wasn't yeah. as succinct as I would have liked. Have I, I would have been before? fine without it. No, I haven't. Right. Yeah. yeah. I must admit 
Middlesex was the first thing I read of, of his years ago and I absolutely adored it. And I had high hopes for this. Didn't quite live up to those hopes, um, but I, I, I still, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I reread books all the time. I am dreadful for starting a new book, getting 25 pages in and thinking, no, I'd much rather read Terry Pratchett again. They don't really reread books. There's too many good ones to <laughs> go back and read again. I have been reading one of my favourite writers, Sebastian Barry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> no, that's not a good sign, no, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> Sebastian Barry, Irish writer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been shortlisted for the Booker Prize mm -hmm. twice. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, A Long, Long Way. Second for Secret Scripture, which was a book before this one. This is Lily's story. Um, and she is 89, and it's a reflection back on her entire life, told in 17 chapters, the days after her grandson died, hanging himself at the school after he came back from uh, the Iraq war. It's a deeply poetic novel at its core. It's a reflected life. Go on. It's a reflected life. It's a, it's a book about memory, the nature of memory. Uh, it's a book about how we create our identity as we go backwards. Oh, and it's and a book about growing old. It's beautiful. It's, it's, um, you didn't like it, Lockie. Uh, but it's also a book, just before you, <laughs> you jump in, <laughs> but it's also a book about family mm -hmm. and the effect of war and tragedy and loss. But do you know what it is? They're, they're not remarkable people. They're not famous no. people. They're just a family that have suffered tragedy. And, and it's beautiful. It reads just... Glorious. Poor old Lockie it's, can't contain his comments. Come on, go, go, go. go, go. <laughs> I, I found this interminable. Um, oh, no! 89-year-old Irish woman sits at a table for, uh, for 250 pages thinking about her family and preparing to kill herself. I mean, spare me. It, I, I, it was, there She's... were moments, but, but, but on the whole, I, 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 was, I was waiting for something that never happened. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, He's I, a beautiful I, writer. No, you don't no, get that. No, no, no. no. That's a thread, that's <laughs> I mean, thread of look, sadness. Just Irish diaspora. God, spare me. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> a, it, but it's <laughs> a level of humanity that is, is in there. He sort of he says wonderful things about that um, only the unfaithful can be truly faithful. Only sort of loses can really win. No, no they're sort of no, really... No, no, just... It's a, it's a world view that is obviously no, not yours no, it's just and not of so your experience. Beyond, uh, I really think it's generational. That's yeah. what I I've think, decided. I th yeah, I think maybe I'm... I'm I don't One know. of my favourite writers, though. One of the few novels I've reread is Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, and that's a really dense novel about the insanity of war and humanity and things like that. I read Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro three times in a row, and I've definitely reread Twilight many, many, many times. <laughs> How many times have you read Twilight? Almost once. <laughs> 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 but one book that I have read and reread is this one, but Roberto Colasso, The Marriage of Cadmus and Harmony. It's a telling and retelling of the Greek myths, the foundational myths of Western civilization. It's extraordinary. I go back and back to this one. A book that I go back and back to is um, Paul Bowles' Let It Come Down, uh, an American novelist who lived in Morocco, North Africa for most of his life, and this is fabulous. Well, for me, it's Harper Lee, To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm. It is something that I, I read probably every year. Mm. It's as relevant now as it was back then in 1960. Mm. Wonderful read. Yeah. Now, I've got some other great books that are out now. I've got Stephanie Alexander, A mm -hmm. Cook's Life, yeah. mm -hmm. the, um, the Fabulous Steph, her yes. memoir. I've got The People Smugglers by Robin de Crispinier, um, and that's out now. I'm looking forward to reading this as well. And then I've got this gorgeous book called Love and Hunger, and it's by Charlotte Wood. Um, this is a lovely little premise, a gorgeous book, and I can't wait to read that either. Mm, terrific. And that's it. Until next time, guys. Looking forward to it. See you then. For your chance to win copies of the books reviewed on this episode, visit studiotv.com.au and join our mailing list. And while you're there, catch up on the extras and check out any episodes you may have missed. All that and more on studiotv.com.au.